Let's reconstruct our earlier problem. If we put $1,000 in the bank for three years, which is the time, and we're earning 8% annual interest compounded semi-annually, that's twice a year, we said that we'd have three times two, we'd have six total periods, we'd have eight divided by two, we'd get 4% each time. So we looked up N and I in our future value table, we found this table factor, and we multiplied a thousand times the table factor. By the way, three and four are factors of 12, aren't they? Factor implies multiplication. And that's what we're always going to do. We're going to find N and I, we're going to find a table factor, and we're going to multiply it times the only dollar value we know in the problem. That's the only dollar value they gave us, isn't it? So that's what we multiply times the table factor. Now, what if they ask it a different way? What if instead of saying, I've got $1,000 now, how much will I have in three years? What if someone says, I need this much money in three years. I need this much money in three years. I can earn 8% compound semi-annually. What do I have to put in the bank today? We do the problem exactly the same way, but we look in a different table. Instead of looking at the table that says future value of a dollar, we go to the table that says present value. So let's go to that table and it is, it says present value of a dollar at end of period. So we look up N is 6, I is 4 percent and what do we see for the table factor? Does everybody see 0.7903? Does that look right? Let's try multiplying that times the only dollar figure we know from the problem. And that should be really close to 1,000. It won't be exact because those table figures are rounded to four decimal places. But it should be real close to $1,000. Multiply 1265.30 times 0.7903. should be close to a thousand dollars. What do we get? Nine 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 point. Oh okay and is there another nine after? Oh okay so we got nine ninety nine point nine nine seven which rounds to a thousand even doesn't it? To the nearest penny. The only dollar amount we know. Okay. Does that work for everybody? All right, now, let's make sure we know which table to look at so we don't get mixed up. First of all, what's always bigger, present value or future value? Future value is always bigger than present value, isn't it? If you're talking about compound interest, it's always going to be bigger in the future than it is now. If I started with a number, and I wanted to multiply it by something and get something bigger. If I multiplied it by one, it would stay the same, wouldn't it? So if I wanted it to be bigger, what would I have to multiply it by? Something bigger than one, right? And if I wanted it to be smaller than this, I'd have to multiply it by something smaller than one. Look in the table we just looked at, the present value table. What do you notice about every stinking number in that table. It's smaller than one, isn't it? In other words, if we multiply anything by anything in that table, it's going to be smaller than it was because we're multiplying by something less than one. Now let's go look at the other table that says future value of a dollar at compound interest. What do you notice about every factor in that table? It's bigger than one, isn't it? So anything we multiply by something in the future value table is going to make it bigger than it was. So if you're looking for present value, you look in the present value table. If you're looking for future value, you look in the future value table. And a way that you can check yourself is you should always end up with future value being bigger than the present value or present value being smaller than the future value. 
So to find present value, we do exactly the same thing we do for future value, except that we look in a different table. If you're going to do it by that scientific calculator, how do you think they found this number? They took the reciprocal of that thing and rounded it to four decimal places. In other words, if you take this and divide it by 12, 1.2653, you'll get that. So, either way, if you have a scientific calculator and you like using it and doing powers and stuff, you don't ever have to use the table. But most, most students tend to use the table, so I'll teach it that way. <laughs>